Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Karen Bowman from the content team for another episode of MWC Shorts. This morning, I'm joined by Gilad Garan, who is the CEO and founder of the cloud solutions provider, ASOX. Morning, Gilad. Welcome. Good morning, Karen. Thanks for joining me. So I want to go straight into a few questions because you were due to take part in a session looking at the future of cloud, uh, cloud and enterprise, and 5G implementation and what that really means for some of these enterprises and industrial players. Um, so where do you see some of these hotspots for 5G implementation? Well, Karen, we're now about two months into the new year, so we can start looking at, at the way this year is going to be uh, progressing. And it's quite clear right now that the hotspot is indeed moving from the consumer-based macro network for now into this hotspot, which is called enterprise in a general term, and more importantly, in the industrial space, where there's more money and attention, and perhaps even merit uh, focus right now. Okay, excellent. And there has been some debate in the industry about whether operators should be involved with building private networks, uh, especially now that private spectrum is being allocated. What is your take on that? Well, I think the jury is still out on that point, and it will heavily depend on the carriers themselves, frankly. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing places like Germany, where the numbers are already quite clear, more than 65% of the industrial firms have applied for private spectrum. Yeah. But there is still opportunity for carriers if they move fast enough. While there are markets in which um, industrial uh, customers have already been accustomed to work with a carrier, sometimes even because of uh, uh, the point of convenience or culture. So there is not just one answer to it, but anyone who looks into this issue with a clear mind has to admit that the carriers do face a challenge here. As you mentioned, spectrum is no longer the issue. There is a question whether mobility or outdoors in this industrial use space is important or not. And above all, there is the issue about small footprint and zoning, where traditionally carriers have never excelled in. So there is quite a debate in the industry. And I think at the end of the day, it will have to do with initiative and individual performance of carriers, rather than just looking at the trend. So, I mean, operators, it sounds like they need to be able to move quite quickly and, and to adapt. How can they stay relevant in this private network world um, other than kind of moving quickly and adapting? What else can they do? Well, I think some of it has, is as simple as terminology. You know, frankly, we're talking with industrial customers who find the RAN terminology quite confusing for them. Mm -hmm. So there is that part in, let's call it market education. The second part, if I may, is, and I've mentioned it uh, in previous interviews, is that people need to realize what 5G is for this use case. The main advantage is that you can bring the whole promise of 5G on a small scale, which is something the carriers are now struggling to do in the macro space. Mm -hmm. But the other thing they need to understand is they're competing with Wi-Fi. So they're not competing again with you know, uh, another carrier. They're not competing about consumer interest. They're competing with Wi-Fi. And that is a very brutal fight that they need to manage. And some of them are, are, have not yet kind of tuned into the program, if you will. So what we're trying to do right now is to talk with these industrial customers and explain to them clearly the benefits of 5G above the buzz or below the buzz and then have them choose what is the right path for them to work with an operator and there are some advantages to that or to build their own network. In some cases, it's also gonna be a question of scale 
We are seeing some big industrial customers. Bosch is an example, which is being very vocal that they will have their own uh, global 5G uh, owned managed networks. And there's potentially opportunities in the mid market uh, um, in Germany and in other places that may work with carriers. So our job is right now to create the infrastructure to make sure that the customers understand real and clear benefits and then have them decide what is the right path for them in terms of the end packet core connectivity. Excellent, thank you. Uh, and I want to touch a bit on one of the case studies that we were going to explore uh, within the session. We actually had one of your industrial customers that you've been working with in Taiwan um, and you've been developing a project <clears throat> excuse me, a project with them. Can you tell me a bit more about that project, what you were doing uh, in Taiwan? Yes, absolutely. So first of all, this project is still work in progress, but it is the first 5G industrial project happening in Taiwan right now. It's a very exciting project with a, a firm by the name of Inventec, which is quite known for manufacturing of electronic goods under other people's brand names. But what is very interesting in that project per se is that we're trying to achieve tangible KPIs and evidence that there is a link between what we're doing to actual uh, performance, which is always tricky in technology, by the way. But what's happening there is we're using two uh, clear use cases. One is using augmented reality for predictive maintenance. This was a use case we were sure going to talk a lot in the industry 4.0 sessions. And I think it has a lot of uh, merit to that uh, point. The other one is perhaps less exciting, but potentially more uh, profitable. And that is improving of yield using optical recognition. And what is exciting about that use case is that we should be able in a few weeks or maybe a few months to show the return on investment um, in, that, in that way. And I think that's gonna be either the first time ever that cellular has actually been able to perform to prove return on investment. So these are the two use cases which we are working on and hopefully um, sometimes towards the end of the quarter or in April, we will be able to become more vocal and more clear about it. The only thing I can, I can say right now is that there are good signs that this is more than just a marketing pitch and 5G does have merits in these specific use cases. Excellent. Thank you, Gilad. Uh, uh, sadly, we're out of time, I'm afraid, but thank you so much for joining me for being part in this NWC short. Gilad Garan from ASOX, thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Bye.